plastics may have been the solution in the early 60s, but it's the problem now, especially in our oceans. It's collecting miles offshore in places like the Eastern Garbage Patch. The Eastern Garbage Patch is a term referring to um, the subtropical convergence zone. It's where the eastern boundary currents for um, the Pacific Ocean meet the western Pacific um, currents and they create a convergence zone in the middle of the North Pacific. And in this area, marine debris or garbage tends to accumulate and it accumulates in patches within this area and that's how it's gotten its name as the garbage patch. The plastic comes from both sides of the Pacific and ships passing through the area. The damage it does is just starting to be researched. I examine the effects of different types of contaminants in ocean health. Wherever we've looked in the marine environment for plastic pollution, um, we've seen it. So not only is it an albatross, which we've seen, and one reason is because there's been a lot of attention on it, so there's lots of pictures and lots of awareness now about these, you know, carcasses of albatross chicks full of, you know, 10 or 12 bottle caps and lighters and toothbrushes, but also from other places, such as the North Sea, people have looked at dead birds that have washed up on shore. And they found that up to 95% of the dead, like northern fulmars that they've looked at, contain plastic. And not only seabirds, we've also seen that other marine organisms, such as sea turtles, also ingest plastic. So I think it's a global problem. Pretty much anywhere we've looked, we've seen evidence of plastic pollution in the marine environment and evidence that those marine organisms are eating it. Well, I was reading a report in 2006 that said that there was a huge accumulation of plastics in our ocean. And that really struck me that, you know, here we were with this massive human fingerprint in our oceans, most notably the eastern garbage patch, but there's in fact a western garbage patch and a southern garbage patch, but 46,000 items of marine debris on or below every square mile of our oceans. In some locations, there was a six to one ratio of plastic to plankton. And I was like, hang on, why don't we know about this? You know, plastic is everywhere. We talk about it every day. We're told it's the enemy. But is it the enemy? Or is it our ability to understand it, to reuse it, and to dispose of it sensibly that's really the enemy? So David decided to fight plastics with plastic. In a few months, he and a crew will set sail in Plastiki, a boat entirely made of plastic, body, sails, and all. The adventure will take him from San Francisco to Sydney, passing through the Eastern Garbage Patch. All this to publicize plastic. And what we're doing is using 12 and a half thousand two liter Coke bottles um, as the buoyancy for the boat. And the idea is fundamentally to rethink waste as a resource. And to do that, we need to get a little bit smarter. And so that's what this project's trying to do, is, is look at plastic in an exciting way. For the past 50 odd years, every piece of plastic that has made it from our shores to the Pacific Ocean has been breaking down and accumulating in what is better known as the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. I'm sure many of you have heard of it, but the problem is it's not a patch. It's the size of a continent, and it's filling up with floating plastic waste. What am I doing building this boat? Well, it's not a conventional boat, which is uh, the first thing to be sort of said. Uh, we, in fact, we're going against all the laws of boat building by turning the boat inside out, in the sense that most boats use displacement to float. And what we're doing is using 12,500 two-litre Coke bottles um, as the buoyancy for the boat. And that then became the biggest challenge, was like, what is the structural material going to be? We've got the bottles for our buoyancy. So then we looked around and said, who's using plastics in a smart way? And we came across this material that really is a smart plastic. That really smart plastic called SR PET is completely recycled and recyclable and was used not only in the body of the boat, but also the sails. The entire boat is made from sustainable materials, right down to the sugar and cashew nut epoxy. Also, it will sail 11,000 nautical miles only on renewable energy, wind, water turbines, solar, and bike. These will also power the communications on board. The Plastiki even features a small garden. Trials have begun, and the boat will set sail soon if the El Nino weather pattern cooperates. But it will take more than just the Plastiki to teach people about plastic waste. There's a list of solutions that we can apply today. 
four of the main items ending up in our oceans are the bags, the styrofoam cups and containers, the lids for bottles, and the plastic bottles themselves. We can take those offline today. We hope that your adventure will inspire others to action. Bon voyage and keep in touch.